Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, quantitative analysis in respect to spectroscopy. So um, if you haven't seen my video on how to think about spectroscopy, um, I did a little bit of an analogy of using a, a glass of cordial and then thinking about the different colours of light that tra are transmitted and arrive at our, at our eyes. And then, uh, uh, and then the other light colours of light that get absorbed. So um, today, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an, an insight as to what what UV visible analysis and AAS is, and then how we apply it uh, to quantitative analysis. So if we take this idea of our cordial example, um, I've got kind of got a basic schematic of what a uh, what a spectrometer. It is essentially so we've got a light source okay so in the case of AAS we're talking about a hollow cathode lamp and now it's not required that you understand what a hollow cathode lamp is or does but what you do need to know is that they um, are a light source essentially that are specific to whatever metal that you want to detect. So um, the key word there is metal. When we're doing atomic absorption spectroscopy, we're talking about metals analysis. So um, you could have a hollow cathode lamp light source for copper, you could have one for aluminium, you could have one for iron, you could have it for whatever metal that you're wanting. Um, so uh, in terms of UV visible analysis, your light source is usually um, just a, a, a light bulb, okay? But in UV visible analysis, uh, you would use what's called a monochromator. And essentially what that means, if you think about the word mono, it means one. So, um, and chroma is color. So a monochromator essentially pulls out one color or one wavelength for you to use in your UV visible analysis. So we've got our light source. Our light then travels through our sample. Now, in the case of uh, UV visible analysis, your sample is usually housed in what's called a cuvette. Um, a cuvette essentially is a one centimeter by one centimeter by about three and a half to four centimeter um, uh, uh, kind of cube thing. And you put your sample, it's kind of like a, um, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, Sorry to my all my maths teachers from when I was in high school. Um, <laughs> um, but essentially you, you put your, it looks like this, and you put your sample into it and the light passes through. Um, and then in the case of atomic absorption spectroscopy, your sample is actually not a cuvette, it's actually a, uh, a flame. So your light actually travels through a flame and what happens in atomic absorption spectroscopy is that your um, you suck your sample into the flame, the water molecules uh, turn into gas molecules and they fly away and what you're left with is um, atoms of, of whatever is in your sample ready for analysis. So they usually call that an atomizer. So they spray this um, liquid into the flame and then your light goes through the flame and then essentially for both of these we have a detector and, and it's really not important how the detector works, but if you consider, you know, the analogy that I used of um, the sun, cordial, and your eye, you get a bit of an idea of how that works. So um, when we're talking about atomic absorption spectroscopy and UV visible analysis, really um, you've got to think about what the end goal is when you're doing VC or IB. Essentially, what what the what, what you're wanting to do is be able to answer questions about these topics. Now, uh, when we're talking about AAS and UVVs, we're talking about a quantitative analysis, which means we want to work out how much of an analyte is in your, in your sample. So the way we do that is that we uh, prepare a series of standards. So the standards we know the concentrations of very well. Um, so we would, we would weigh out, so if we're using um, for perhaps for UV visible analysis, we would take um, a compound of known concentration. So you might weigh out the compound that you're looking for and then you dilute it very accurately. And so therefore you have a series of standards you'd have from low to high concentration, a series of standards that you know the concentration of very accurately. And so that's what we call our standard series. 
And so when we have our sample, uh, the, something that we've got an unknown concentration for, we can analyze that and compare the value that you get for that through, with, with your standard series. Now, what you usually will get, forget about this for a second, what you'll usually get is a whole bunch of numbers. So what I've got here, if you can't see um, the numbers on your screen there, we've got concentration. So again, this is what we know the concentration of. We will have uh, prepared our sample and, uh, sorry, prepare our standards with accurately known concentrations. So here I've got 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and they're in ppm. And what you would do is put your samples into your spectrometer and it, all it will give you is a series of numbers. So uh, you would, you would, if you've got a concentration of zero, we've got an absorbance of 0 0.01. For our concentration of 0 0.2, we get 0 0.11. 0 0.4, we get 0 0.23. Uh, 0 0.6, we get 0 0.29. And 0 0.8, we get 0 0.41. And when you look at those numbers, you can look at them and go, oh, there's a there's a nice trend there. Yeah, yeah. As you get more concentrated, uh, you get a higher absorbance. That's what we call the Beer-Lambert law, uh, if you want to look a little bit deeper into it. So you can see there's a bit of a trend with those numbers, but, um, you know, you need to be able to, the skill that they're looking for um, when you're doing this type of analysis is actually for you to, to be able to plot them up onto an xy graph and find this you can see we've got a nice linear relationship between all of our samples so all i've done is i've plotted up concentration on the x-axis with absorbance on the y-axis and so for a zero we've got zero and 0 0.01 so that's the first dot there we've got 0 0.2 and 0 0.11 0 0.4 0 0.23 etc and you can see that's a really nice straight line graph from which you can do a quantitative analysis for. Now, um, if you're doing this uh, in an exam or you're doing it in a SAC, usually what you'll be asked to do is to actually uh, draw this up on a piece of graph paper, just like you might have done in, in your younger years in, in high school. Um, if you're doing this uh, for a report that you've got to write up and you've got to submit it, usually what they'll get you to do is do it all in Excel. Um, in a spreadsheet and then draw a graph and come up with a y equals mx plus c equation. So um, if you're doing, it, if you remember back to your year 8, year 9 maths, you remember this y equals mx plus c, okay, m is your gradient, c is your, um, the, uh, where your y intercept is. So this is all applied mathematics. Now, what I've got here, I've got an, uh, um, so you can imagine we've done our calibration. Usually you do it all in the one hit, but we've done our calibration. We've got all our numbers right. We've got, um, sorry, excuse me. We've got a value for our unknown 0 0.25. Now, um, 0 0.25, you can look at the numbers and go, oh, well, it's halfway between 0 0.23 and 0 0.29, and therefore it's probably about 0 0.5. Um, so that's that's a good uh, guesstimate of in this case it's a little bit fortuitous that that's how it's worked out but um there's two different ways that you could work out the concentration of your unknown the first way is to use your mathematics so for those of you who are uh, doing an excel spreadsheet and you get a y equals mx plus c and you're mathematically doing doing it that way you can essentially put 0 0.25, which is your absorbance, in for your y value. So you'll have y equals some number times x plus another number. And so you, you would actually rearrange that and solve for your x value, which is your concentration in ppm. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to actually take that 0.25. So we find that on our y axis here. It's about there, right in the middle. Okay, it's all very not accurately done with no, no, so if you do this, make sure you use a ruler and a spreadsheet and, and sorry, a ruler and graph paper. Um, I've just done it by hand here, okay, but it still shows the concept. So here's our 0.25 here. What you would do is get a ruler and rule across very accurately across to your straight line graph. 
And then from there, you would rule straight down to your x-axis. And so there, that value there is the concentration of your unknown. So that's, you know, that's the first step. If you're doing a, 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 a SAC or you're doing a exam, usually there's a, what's come before your analysis for your unknown has been a series of dilutions. It might be one or two dilutions. So you would take your point, it's about 0.5 ppm, 0.5 ppm, and then you'd uh, use your C1V1 equals C2V2 or CIVI equals CFVF, whichever one you choose to use. Um, you'd take that, you'd do your dilution cal calculation to find out the concentration in, in your original solution in your um, concentrated solution so why would you have diluted well if you have gotten a value here if imagine if it said 10 times dilution you would have actually gotten absorbance that was outside of the calibration range so um, essentially you have to dilute your sample so that's within that calibration concentration range in order to get an accurate result so uh, Again, to re reiterate, what you're, you've got to remember that the skills that they're looking for in either UV Viz or AAS is can you quantitatively tell me how much of whatever is in your sample? So you need to be able to take your results, whichever way you do that, uh, whether it's UV Viz or AAS. So you get your results, you get your sample. Um, your value for your unknown you might do three unknowns that's that's another way to do it so you might do three of the same sample or three different samples depending on so if you imagine that you've taken five different types of milk and you're looking at the calcium con concentration in them you could take each of those different samples and find out the calcium concentrations in them so um, you could do that or you could take three of the same sample and get an average so that you get a more accurate value for your sample um, but essentially can you take those numbers can you graph them out on an xy axis or onto a, a cartesian graph um, and then can you find out how much was in your diluted sample and then can you extrapolate back to how much was in your original sample so they're the skills they're looking for you to be able to do if you found this useful, um, thanks very much for joining me. Please leave any comments or questions uh, in, the, in the comments box below or to the side, um, or this side. I'm not quite sure which side it's going to be. That's all right. Um, my name is Amelia McCutcheon. I'm from the Zen of Chemistry. Uh, I essentially make chemistry, learning chemistry simple. So um, if you like what I'm doing, please give this video a like. Please give it a share around uh, to your friends and your colleagues and your family. Um, if you'd like to stay up to date, I do give away my lecture materials for free for short periods of time. So if you'd like to get in on that, please go to my website at zenofchemistry.com and you can sign up there so you don't miss anything. I'm going through a few different platforms at the moment, so I keep changing what I'm doing. So uh, make sure you sign up to my mailing list. You'll definitely uh, make sure that you'll um, keep up to date with what I'm doing there. Um, yeah, my name's Amelia. Thanks very much for joining me. Again, please give it a like and a share. Thanks very much.